Genesis chapter 39. Genesis is the first book in the Bible, so as soon as you open the book, <laughs> it's not hard to find. Amen? Amen. All right, Genesis 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in the house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left her cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak be beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He has showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. The word of God. Amen, amen. So as we look at this passage, I mean, we're looking at a story that is very common. We all know it. It's a story about Joseph and the, the dream, you know, the, the, the play on Broadway, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. So this is the Joseph that gets the multicolored coat from his dad. He's the one of 12, the baby, or the second to last, rather. And he's the one that is ultimately, as we know, the favorite. When we look at the, um, at the story, um, you know, a lot of times we see a lot of pastors, they preach about it in terms of jealousy, overcoming your enemies, knowing to prosper, to succeed, don't worry, it's, you're going to make it no matter what. But today I really want to talk to you guys about the ability to endure the suffering. How do you endure what you're going through? Sometimes it's hard, sometimes we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it's like, is this ever going to end? It seems to be one hard time after another after another. It's like, God, isn't it enough already? I got hit this one time. I was starting to climb out, but then I got hit again. God, don't you think that's all I need? Why are you having me go through all of this? Now, when we look at the story of Joseph, we see a young man, and then when you look at the first dream which you find in Genesis 37, verses 5 to 8, he see he had a dream of sheaves of grain, where his brother's sheaves were down, down, bowing down to his. And sheaves are like a stack. It's like you put it all together and wrap it up, and one stack is called a sheaf. A chef. A chef. S-H-E-A-F, I think that's how you spell it. The plural sheaves. 
anyhow, so um, they had, and that was his first dream that he told them about. Then he had the second dream, which you find in Genesis 37, 9 to 11, where the sun, the moon, and 11 stars are bowing down to Joseph, which could only mean that he was interpreted as the 11 brothers and the sun, the moon being his mother and father were bowing down to Joseph. And even at that point, even his dad was like, who does this kid think he is? Like, I would bow down to my son? I don't think so. So when we see all of this happening, we see that Joseph as a young man, he has an air of arrogance. He's kind of arrogant about it. He has these dreams. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be a big shot. I'm going to be a big deal one day. And you guys are going to bow down to me. So he was kind of like, if you think about it, like bragging about it. To his, to his brothers and basically let them know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be all that. So, I mean, you're speaking, like I said, he's bragging about it, speaking too soon, telling everybody what his dreams are. Because sometimes God will give you a dream and it's not meant to be shared with everybody. Sometimes when you have a dream, you just got to keep it to yourself and just see how God's going to play it out. Just see where God's going to take you with it. You work your hardest, you do your best at it, and you just make sure your dream comes true. Because sometimes that best friend you say you have, you might share it with him or her, and then later on they steal your dream and they take it away from you. Or they backstab you or they cause you more grief than you really should have been going through because you just opened your mouth way too soon. You trusted too much. And sometimes, sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, I'm not saying that your best friend isn't a great confidant, I'm not saying there's not somebody that you can talk to, but sometimes there's some things God is only meant to tell you in that moment. He didn't mean to tell anybody else. He didn't send somebody to tell you. He told you himself because he wanted you to know that you're going to be somebody. And when you get to being that somebody, that then you, you'll achieve the dream that God has given you. And you don't need to let everybody know that. People will bring you down and they will hurt you and they will make you feel like you're going to be a nobody. But yet you then can take comfort in your dream knowing that God showed you something. God showed you a vision. God gave you what your future was going to look like. And when you have the future that God has given you in your mind, in your vision, because God places the dreams within us, right? Do you guys believe that? If you have a dream or a vision of your future, it's God that put it there. Meaning you can make it. That you will achieve it. Don't let people discourage you. Don't let people tell you that you're never going to get there. It might take 10, 15 years, but you will get there eventually. As long as you stay true to, true to yourself and you stay true uh, to God. Learning how to share and when to share is extremely important. And so it's because of Joseph's arrogance and telling his brothers about his dream too quickly, too soon, that landed him in slavery in the first place. Because the brothers got jealous, as you guys know the story, and then they sold him. They meant to kill him or to pretend that he was dead. But then they're like, oh, well, let's just sell him. And then told his dad that he died. And, I mean, as you guys know, like, it's just a regular story. And then so he's thrown into this new culture. He doesn't know the people because he was sold to Egyptians. He doesn't know the people, doesn't know the language, he doesn't understand it, but somehow he has to survive. One thing we have to understand, when God has favor on your life, God always has favor on your life. I hope you guys realize that. If God has given you a dream, if God has put a vision within you, know that that dream will come to pass. No matter what obstacles will come your way, no matter what the issues are that may arise, no matter how meek or how bleak it may seem, because it may look really dark and like, this is not happening, I did this, I did that. God, there's no way this dream is going to come to pass. Sometimes it may look like it's just not going to happen. Joseph could have been like, you know what, I'm in the slavery now, no way am I going to become a big shot dude who people are going to bow down to, what, is, what, did, what was that dream all about? He could have just given up, curled up and just been a slave and just done whatever. But even the Bible tells us that God had favor on him, God was with him, the Lord was with Joseph, and, with Joseph, and he prospered in Genesis 39. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. 
And even other people will see that God is with you. If you're in a bad situation, on your way to achieving your dream, on your way to achieving your vision, don't think that the steps that about going backwards is going to keep you from moving forward. Sometimes you know, you got to get a running start. You know, you got to back up away from the ledge. You see the edge coming, but you see the other side, and you know you got to get there. Sometimes you just got to back up a little bit, take a couple of steps, and then go for it and take a big leap. Because once you take that jump and you make that leap, and then you get to the other side, then you've made it. You've made it. And there, God was with Joseph every step of the way. And even to the point where Joseph got sold to Potiphar. I mean, he could have been sold to any Egyptian person. But yet he was sold to Potiphar, who was one of the officials in Pharaoh's in the Pharaoh's court. And even Potiphar saw that God was with him. Sometimes we walk around not even realizing that God is just working on our behalf, doing things for us on our behalf, working in our favor. We question, we're like, wait a second, what's going on? But if you just continue to, as I say, stay true to yourself. Stay true to God. Stay true to what you know and what you've learned. And don't compromise for anybody. There's no need to compromise your integrity or your dignity or your character for the sake of somebody else. Because someone told you to do so. But yet, you know where you're headed. You have your vision. You have your dream. And no dream, by the way, is too small for God. No dream is too small to achieve. It might seem far-fetched. It might seem like there's no way possible that that's going to happen. But usually it just takes an initial leap of faith in order to know, that, that in order to get the ball rolling. And so Potiphar had, could see that the Lord was with Joseph and that the Lord had given him success in everything he did. And so because of that, Joseph then in favor in the eyes of Potiphar and was able to then become his attendant. And because he put him as his attendant, he had nothing to worry about. So at this point in Joseph's life, everything looks good. Everything's looking up. He's not being treated like one of those bad slaves. He's not getting whipped. He's not getting any of that. But then all of a sudden, Potiphar's wife decides that she's going to mess things up for him. And it happens. Like I said before already, it happens. These things happen. You ever feel like you're making it and you're getting close to your goals and then yet hit by another negative thing? And then another, and then another, and then another. Like I said, it just seems like it's never ending. It seems like it's just going to continue to be bad no matter what. And you're never going to get there. When... And I think I used this analogy before, um, the Nelson Mandela story. Um, he's someone who was great in terms of overcoming adversaries and maintaining a positive outlook on things. This was a man who was fighting for freedom in South Africa for the blacks. I mean, the land belongs to the blacks, right? And there was segregation, and he was fighting for the equality there. And yet he lands himself in prison. But even in prison, he still was positive. He was doing what they told him to do. And he was still, like, he was fighting against the, the injustice. But yet, where he had started with violence, he then realized had to be turned to, to nonviolence. By becoming nonviolent, remaining peaceful, he then began to have favor in the eyes of the guards. And then they ended up giving him long pants opposed to the short pants that they gave the, 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 the black prisoners. And so then he ended up being, in the time that he was there, getting them long pants and working for them to, to be able to wear that. And it's interesting to see that, um, that even though he was like that, he could have been angry. But he wasn't. He decided to remain nonviolent and to be positive about things. And he even said, difficulties break some men, but make others. No ax is shaped sharp enough to cut the soul of a sinner who keeps on trying. One arms with the hope that he will rise even in the end. With hope, there's so much you can achieve. With hope, 
There's so much that you can do. Just don't give up. Like I said, sometimes you need to take a few steps back in order to get ahead, in order to make that leap of joy. Joseph was in jail, as we know, and we'll run through this quickly. Joseph was in jail. He it seemed almost like there was no hope. And then he meets these two guys, he has, he interprets their dreams. By interpreting their dreams, what he told one of them, don't forget me. But then he got out and forgot about Joseph. But then years later, Pharaoh has a dream. And who's the one who interprets the dreams for Pharaoh? But Joseph himself. And then Joseph then gets out of all of that, then becomes the person in charge of the famine, as we know, that Egypt went through the seven years of, of prosperity and then seven years of famine. But through those years of prosperity, Joseph was the one who helped them save to prepare for the seven years of famine. And then when the seven years of famine came by, it was his family that came to him for help. And not recognizing him or knowing who he is, they were the ones to bow down to him. Just like his dream had shown him, those many, many years before, his family ended up bowing down to him. It's an amazing story to see it, because sometimes, like I said, we have dreams, and we're chipping away, and we're chipping away at them, and we try so hard to get there, but then obstacles come in our way, and it's enough for us to just say, you know what, I give up, forget about it. It's not going to happen. But don't give up. Stay the course. Stay at it. Keep going after your dream. Don't look at your age. Don't look at, at how many years have already gone by. Don't look at how much money has already been spent. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Because when God gives you a dream and he tells you that it's going to come to pass, Keep at it because it will come to pass. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? I don't want you guys to give up. I don't want you guys to think that it's not going to happen. Because we each here have a dream within us. God has planted a seed within you that needs to grow, that needs to be watered, and needs to take root. And it's taking its roots within you, and now you've got to keep watering, keep showing that sun on it, so that it can continue to grow. In the face of adversaries, in the face of negativity, in the face of things that look, that make it look so bleak, look, make it look so impossible, just say, God, I'm going to stick the course. I'm going to stick to it, because you put this dream within me. You put it there, God. So God, help it to grow. Help it to grow. And it's only by the grace of God really that we have that strength to do that, to get through that bad time. Because imagine Joseph, what he must have thought, what he must have went through. The Bible doesn't describe exactly what Joseph's thoughts were in those times. But I'm sure he had some moments where he was like, man, God, is this really going to happen? And I know we all think like that sometimes. I do. But I believe that with our God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen? With our God, we can make it. Because all things work together for our good. No matter how bad it looks now, trust me, that experience you're going through is going to help you to get that boost you need to achieve that dream. Because sometimes God allows you to go through some things. Because you know that if you get to there too fast, you're not going to appreciate it as much. Amen? 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 So I hope the word has blessed you this afternoon. I pray that you can use it in your life. Amen? In order to move forward. Amen? Amen. And to trust in the Lord. Amen. So let's all stand to our feet so that we may end. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.